feel so so awful for our uh, incredible fans that traveled um, here. It was um, incredible to see them, their support for us, and uh, to not perform any better in, in games this year like this. Um, I promise you that doesn't, um, I don't need someone to tell me I didn't get it done. And it's, uh, I think our staff and um, our young men, starting with our staff, starting with me, have, have got to um, create a standard of the way we consistently work, consistently compete, and, um, and figure out how to be a true team. And um, that is my goal in 2024. And I'll need these two to help me and the staff to help me. But uh, it's disappointing today for our incredible fans and our support our administration that, uh, that we didn't perform any better. Congrats to Coach Loxley. They came prepared and certainly uh, outplayed us. Uh, Coach, the bowl game provides you an extra opportunity to evaluate going into the spring. You talk about the quarterback position today. What did you learn about Peyton? Uh, did it change anything about where Hank Brown maybe sits going into the spring? Uh, it's wide open, you know, with um, – I think Hank has something to him for sure. I mean, the guy threw 42 touchdowns in one pick in his senior year in high school. There's, there's something to that. Um, and I'm constantly evaluating players, staff, everything. And if we see that my evaluation has been wrong and you have to change gears and, and reevaluate to, to make us better, then that sh is, is the steps that you take quarterback position will be an interesting one, certainly in, in spring practice. It's kind of following up on that, just what does, obviously, Rivaldo had a huge impact on the game, but kind of out, outside of him, what does a game like today show about how you know, important the, the idea of wide receivers coming in next fall are going to end up being to this offense? Well, I, I love our wide receiver class. I think it's one of the best in the country that we signed. And um, certainly that's a place we need some depth and some added playmaking ability. Um, but it, and congratulations to Rivaldo. I think he broke the uh, Auburn tight end receiving record uh, today. And so congratulations to him on that. But, uh, you know, we, yes, the receiving core coming in is absolutely, we're banking on them helping us and making us better. Um, and more versatile and can do more things. But it also, you have to play well around every position, you know, and I didn't think we protected well in the first half. Didn't think we ran the ball well in the first half either. And um, so it, it, it's, it's all of it. And defensively, we you know, played really well defensively the second half. But it goes back to that standard. Um, it's not okay just to play really well and do your assignment for a half. But we are excited about the wide receivers coming in for sure. Can you talk a little bit more about Hank Brown and the poise he showed when he came in for a freshman? Hank has incredible poise. I see it every day when he's running the uh, scout team and. He has very little protection, and he stands in there and makes throw after throw after throw. Um, I think he has incredible poise for, for a freshman, for sure. And um, he's, uh, he has great humility, wants to be taught, wants to learn, has a good IQ for the game, understands timing. Even the last throw that um, I thought the receivers should have kept coming, and um, that's kind of what Hank anticipated. But he anticipates throws really well, and he's got great poise for a freshman. Uh, Coach, you talked about you know, wanting to maybe solidify or cement a team atmosphere a little bit moving into 2024. Where do you feel the biggest, like, what's the biggest disconnect you think, you know, right now? Um, I, I think, I don't know that this is, you know, just the case for Auburn, but it's certainly something that we are are battling some is just the um, the disease of me. I think that I think that's in a lot of areas of life now, and it's, it's no 
we're not exempt to it in our locker room, and um, I think we've got to face it head on. I mean, it's not everybody for sure, but there's just uh, there, there's a lot of things that um, that I'm hopeful that can be a part of the Auburn football program that, man, we really do care, love, trust one another to put the team first. And I think those are the ones who are going to excel in building sustainable programs that compete um, at a high level, you know. And so I think that's, uh, you know, and we're not the only ones that have to battle that. And you see some that are battling pretty effectively. And, you know, we've got to, particularly when you're not, when you're disappointed and you're not in the playoffs or you're not, you know, what do you do then? And I think it's, uh, it's those challenges that make football the best training ground there is for life. And there's a lot of lessons that we, we're, we need to learn for sure. Yeah. I mean, look at this, just the totality of the season. I mean, obviously you probably want to be a little farther along, but how well positioned do you I'm probably my hardest critic. I, I don't think I did a very good job um, in, a, in a lot of areas this year with with our staff and with our, our team. And I felt like we competed really, really well in some games, and we had some some letdowns in others, and we didn't com complete um, some games we could have won, and we weren't consistent in the level of competitiveness that uh, that you have to have to win at this level, particularly in our conference or against Big Ten teams. So, um, you know, we can all say, you know, we, we need to improve our roster, and, and we've said that, and, and we're working on that, and, and, and we're going to do that. But even with the roster we had, um, you know, I felt like um, we could have gotten more out of it if, if I had done a better job. Rivaldo, could you, uh, I know you're not happy with the result, but to set the season record for receptions by tight end, what does that mean to you? Um, I just want to give God all the glory for um, allowing me to come out here and play this game and play for this team. But um, like all the stats and stuff, they don't really mean a lot to me, but I just wish we would just came out with a win here. And, but again, I just want to thank God for allowing me to play this game and, and be a part of our history. Uh, Coach, uh, can you talk about the game plan offensively coming into this one? Uh, you know, what went wrong out there today? Was it execution? Was it, you know, how did you feel about the game plan? And, and do you guys feel like it was an effective game plan for this one? Well, obviously, I don't feel like it was an effective one. Um, from, uh, I, I didn't get too involved in it um, for most of the part until this week because of recruiting and uh, really wanted to kind of evaluate um, everything about our program. And it, um, but we, we didn't run the ball. It starts there. And so we have to go look at the, the run schemes that we had. And, you know, did we, did we not play hard up front? Or, I mean, that's really hard for me to tell. I mean, but they, they really dominated the line of scrimmage against us. With, and they did load the box now. They forced us to, uh, they had extra hats in the box for sure. And that's when you've got to be able to throw it some. And, but we didn't protect the passer real well. And it wasn't all the old line. There were sometimes the backs didn't didn't get the protection right. Um, but anytime you you struggle like we did, uh, it's, it's it's not it's not. I don't feel like the plan was was great. Okay. Here, here, here. That's awesome. You guys get off to a slow start on, on defense. They score twenty one, but after that, you know, did, you know, did a really good job holding them down. What does that say about this defense? Kind of I would say it's just uh, we started with like a few miscommunications, uh, a few missed tackles, something that we critically need. You know, we got to make up the field tackles and stuff like that. Um, but like for our returners, we, like I, I talked to Breeze not too long ago and told me like we, we're trying to start a set a foundation and, and we really just need a standard for next year. So. What do you sort of credit that first quarter to kind of thinking back? Did you see that coming? Were you surprised that? I was real, yeah, I was real surprised. Uh, really thought defensively, um, we had 
and I know we were playing some young kids, but um, really thought we would start faster and could match up with these guys. And, um, you know, it hit us with a big screen um, on the first drive, and everything just kind of snowballed. But we had a ton of uh, misalignments and miscommunications right in the, in the early part of the game that really cost us. And, you know, we got to look at ourselves as coaches first to see, you know, why we weren't more effective in, in getting those those things communicated with our kids. We've got time for two more. You, you say you didn't do a very good job this year. What would you have done differently? Well, I mean, that's, you know, every game's different. I mean, if you go look at the – the Georgia game, I wish we were protected better because we had some shots. If you go to the Ole Miss game, I wish we had gone with more tempo. And um, you know, if you go to the Alabama game, I wish we, you know, fielded punch better, and I wish we had taught fourth and thirty-one defense better. And, um, you know, but ultimately, if, if you have to look at yourself as coaches, and our kids are going to make some mistakes sometimes, but. You know, in those critical moments, are our kids coached well enough to to get it done? And when we don't get it done, I, you have to look at I have to look at myself. And so every game's different as to what you have done differently. Uh, but you know, you certainly uh, you certainly don't uh, enjoy having to to say that or, or feel that. But. That's uh, that's the way I feel right now. And, you know, we're going to improve the, the roster and, and all of that, but you know we still could have gotten more out of this season, I believe, for our young men and our, our wonderful fans. One more question. Uh, Coach, what's your biggest takeaway here at the end of this first year um, about where you guys are at? We're uh, incredibly blessed to be at Auburn, incredibly blessed by our administration, our fans and it hurts like heck to let them down and not compete um, on given days but my takeaway is that, that I'm still as confident as ever that this this could be an elite football program again and it takes great recruiting but it also takes player-led teams that put team first and the standard of the team every single day first and we're still learning that and uh, we've got to demand it as coaches, and we can't waver from it when we get back in January. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the leadership of our team doing that. Thank you, Coach Reed.